Okay, yeah, uh, what I'm gonna show you in this uh, little video is how to make uh, shooting sticks. I've got a couple of them here made, so this video is going in reverse order. The one on the left is uh, about five feet long, and the uh, one on the right is six and a half feet long. That's a shooting stick, so that you can use uh, if you uh, want to shoot from a straight up standing position. And you see uh, they're held together with uh, what's called a purset knot and uh, I've done something with the handles there. Here's a shorter one. You can see when you got a purset knot, you spread the thing apart and when you put weight on it, it uh, it's very stable. It just makes the knot grip the stick tighter and tighter as you press, put pressure on it and uh, you can spread the legs apart depending on, on how high or how low you want to shoot. So uh, it's uh, very adjust adjustable. This one here is a more practical size, being five feet. You could make it shorter too. But uh, And this uh, long-geared one is, well, might, uh, might be fun uh, at the shooting range. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, a couple of steps, uh, just how to, uh, mainly how to do that purse at knot because that's really the key to this whole thing and it's so simple it just takes you a few minutes to make a, a set of sticks like this so uh, let's get started okay I'm gonna make a purse at knot for tying these uh, two uh, sticks together to make some shooting sticks starting off with about a six foot piece of uh, paracord you need about six feet to do this and uh, you begin by just taking your loop placing it underneath here get all your cords kind of in line here try to make a nice neat job okay I'm gonna pull this loop up like so and I'm gonna just pull these two right on through there like so pretty simple you know when you pull it tight it's like so right next thing we do is we take this we will flip it over get our cords all straight here now this loop here I'm pull a little bit of it out and uh, I'm gonna pull that cord that loop underneath there keeping all my cords still straight all right and uh, now I'm going to take do the same thing basically again I'm going to pull that through there again like so so now we got basically one half of the person knot I want to tie the uh, extra the other uh, stick together so I'm going to take the cords I'm going to pull them underneath here and I'm going to begin by taking this cord here just going to wrap it around the stick here like that once and I'm going to take it and I'm going to wrap around the stick one more time there now I'll do the same thing with this guy around once wrap it around a second time there you go now once you got that done you can suck this stuff up all together a little bit make it nice make sure you none of your lines are crossing that they're all sitting side by side and you cinch her up real good. You know, one way to cinch up this side here, yeah, make sure that side is tight, and then get these guys tight there. Okay, now now that that's tight, I'm going to uh, flip the whole thing over. I'm going to make a, a flat knot or a reef knot as they taught us in. Uh, in uh, Cub Scouts. That was a while back. Okay, I'm gonna take this 
going to bring it through this way the first time, the flat knot, and then the opposite way the next time. So we'll get this, this cord here, bring that through like so. This is as simple as it is. Now we're almost done. We've got a flat knot here. I'll take these cords. I'm gonna lay them through here and uh, I'm flip this baby over here and do exactly the same thing on this side here. Another flat knot. Make sure this is all tied up tight here. one and two now what you could do is uh, this paracord kind of likes to fray a little bit uh, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll mark how long I want it to be and then I'm gonna undo this knot and I'm gonna tie tie a knot in the end like so there's different ways of doing this, but uh, you know you could just tie a knot in the end. Uh, I would put a little further up, cinch it up good and tight, and then cut it off right there. It'll fray, but it'll it won't go any further than that. Then you keep a nice clean end. So uh, basically, that's your purset knot. And when you uh, get your sticks across like that, the, the knot can slide up and down if you need it to. But uh, when you cross the sticks, to use it as a shooting stick, as it spreads apart, it pulls that knot tight, and it's a very secure rest uh, for the forearm of a rifle. And you can, uh, it's uh, surprising how steady a shot you can make with just a simple pair of shooting sticks. Now I'm gonna show you uh, roughly how to use these shooting sticks. Uh, in this case, I've made uh, the sticks six and a half feet high, which actually is pretty unwieldy for unwieldy for taking around in the bush and stuff. But uh, I have uh, another set that's like five foot high, and it would be a little more practical. You can make them any length you want, but you, I mean, if you're shooting from a shooting pos sitting position, you might want to just make them much shorter. Uh, Either way, the construction is the same. Uh, so this just to give you an idea of uh, how they're used. So I'll just uh, take the rifle, and this is the main one I had in mind for, for, uh, for this thing anyways. Uh, it's kind of a buffalo rifle, 45-120. Very heavy barrel on it. And uh, I can shoot it from standing position, like quickly down under I guess but uh, it's a, it sure benefits from some shooting sticks so at six and a half feet uh, I can adjust the spacing of the uh, of the sticks if I want to shoot a little higher or lower or downhill or uphill I can just spread them this knot that I showed you how to make that person knot that just holds there nice and steady I'm going to do a few other changes to this make some padding on the top, maybe even slide some padding on the, underneath the knot, but uh, mainly just to protect the forearm or the stock. I mean, if your rifle's kind of rough already, you may not want to worry about that. But so you can just basically take your rifle and line her right, right up, perfectly steady. You know, mighty steady compared to a standing shot, anyways. If I want to shoot a little higher, I'll go like this. If I want to shoot a little lower, I can spread the legs apart more. Or I can slide that knot, bring the sticks together, of course. Slide that knot down. And shoot. You know, let's see if I was in a sitting position, I could still use these sticks. So, being at six and a half feet long, they're they're a bit uh, clumsy for carrying around, but uh, if you had them in the camp or something like that, I'd prefer to have a, 
set of six and a half foot sticks like this so that I can handle uh, any kind of uh, shooting situation on the spot if I was going to carry them. But I probably want to have them a little bit shorter. That's basically it. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do here next, just because I can't leave well enough alone, right? I'm going to make uh, some uh, rubber covers for the top part of these uh, shooting sticks. What I did is I uh, went to the hardware store and I found some rubber hose that fits these uh, things just about right. And uh, this is going to be my, uh, my first go at this, actually, because uh, I have a feeling when I was testing that rubber hose that when you get it on there on the stick you're not going to pull it off again so uh, I'll try to make this clear but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push it on first and I'm going to trim it uh, as after I get it on uh, see I got a little bit of rough wood there let's see how this goes here I don't know. This is going to go on there. Ah, oh, yeah, that's pretty freaking tight. That's pretty tight. Okay. Yeah, that's not going to be easy. It's a tight, bit of a tight fit. I didn't think it was going to be that tight. Too easy. Less. Maybe. Maybe I take cut off a piece like that, and I can tap it up there. Not sure if that's going to work, but you know what? I'm going to give that a shot. So I'll take a quick measurement. How much I want? I'm going to want about. Where is that? Stupid uh, ruler here. Everything is hard. Whoops, on. I'm going to want about seven inches of that. Yeah, good seven inches. So I'm going to cut off seven inches right by the seven there. Here. Now see if I can tap that thing down. In fact, if I get another little piece of wooden dowel tapped in the end, uh, well, we'll see. But that I would like to get. Run all the way down to here if I can. So I'll see what I can do. So now you can see with the help of a a little bit of a rubber, little rubber mallet. I was able to uh, get those hoses popped onto there pretty good. And uh, so they uh, actually, uh, if you're going to do something like that, this is five eighths inch uh, inside diameter uh, heater hose. That seems to work just right for these five eighths dowels. And uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea to. Uh, run some fine sandpaper over the dowels before putting the hoses on. That'll make them slip on quite a bit easier. But it can be done. What I uh, had to do with these ones is I had to take this, this hammer and, and just tap it. You keep on tapping it. It started here and then worked it all the way up. But it gets on there and once it's on there you're not going to get it off. You have to cut it off. It's, uh, it's really stuck on there good. And you can make it a longer piece if you want. I'm going to fiddle around with that a bit. might want it to be longer, but then you can't get the knot up any higher, so maybe this is about the right length. So there's how you get your, your padding on your stick so you don't damage the uh, uh, forearm on your rifle because uh, 
as you can see, you know, if you have some nice checkering on your forearm, I'd be a little bit concerned about the recoil on the rifle, especially after repeated shots, maybe starting to wear that checkering a little bit. So it's not a bad idea having a bit of a uh, bit of uh, padding on that stick if you're going to use it a lot. If it was for uh, just a, a beater, beat around type gun, I don't think I'd worry about padding. I think the wood will be good enough, but maybe for a forearm that's got some checkering. So that's my opinion.